Okay, welcome back. Uh, so let's get started uh, on the next video on the construction and demolition waste management. So we already, uh, uh, like last uh, video, I showed you some uh, uh, like examples of different research uh, activities that could be done. And also I showed you a paper on uh, some of the stuff, how to understand this uh, research results. So again, any question, feel free to contact through the discussion forum. We'll be more than happy to answer. And these are, this is our upcoming topic in the Indian contest. Uh, some of you out there who want to study further for your master's, PhD, more than welcome. And then we'll be more than happy to help you on that aspect as well. So coming to the, maybe this is just could be the last video of this particular topic. So here we will be looking at, as I said, we'll be uh, trying giving you some of the statistics with one of the disaster uh, that has happened uh, uh, in in last decade, uh, which is uh, on the hurricane, hurricane Katrina. If you Google Hurricane Katrina, you will find it. Those of you who are not familiar with that, uh, lots of debris were generated. Almost two million uh, yard cube went into the water. Sixty-five million yard cube debris. In this, no hazardous spill was reported. Around six thousand to seven thousand six hundred six thousand to seven thousand homes were demolished. So that's a lot of uh, damage. And then uh, in, that was for uh, the state of Mississippi, the, the other state, Louisiana, those two states are hit really bad. They found uh, nearly 16.5 million yard cubes. So it's, uh, they found a lot of uh, uh, removal uh, for whatever is, uh, so that was around 60%. So you can think about how much was generated. So 60% is around 16. So uh, you can think about another 40%. So that would be another 12, 13, so around 28, 29 a million yard cube was generated in Louisiana, and which was reported. So I know about 28 million cube was total uh, curbside debris that they had 9 million pounds of CFCs, chlorofluorocarbon, which is around 15% of the world consumption, 1.5 million uh, from, from uh, uh, 1.5 million are coming from the cars, 1.5 million uh, pounds. So you can divide it by 2.2 to get the kg. Uh, for from the, so these are the chlorofluorocarbons got released into the atmosphere, uh, several propane tanks, 30,000 homes were demolished, so nearly 12 million, million yard cube. Yard cube is around, yard, one yard is three feet, so yard cube you can multiply it by 27 to get the uh, meter cube. So uh, maybe not, it's the other way actually. Uh, so uh, we have uh, one, f yeah you can convert that using uh, one feet is, uh, three, one yard is three feet and then one feet is around uh, 12 inches, 1 inch is 2.54 centimeter. So it's one feet is around 0.3 meters. So based on that, you can always do this uh, conversion from yard cube to meter cube. So that's not a big deal. So that's not that much uh, of important in terms of uh, unit over here. So but total around 45 million yard cube uh, went into the atmosphere, uh, went uh, into the environment. Uh, and then uh, here, uh, it was from, uh, and then the, for comparison, uh, that's, that was nearly the same amount was slightly, slightly higher was generated in Florida during 2004 hurricane season from all the storms. And uh, so this is a lot of uh, CND debris, uh, CND like construction, it's a demo disaster debris. And yeah, as you can see these photographs, uh, I'll show you several photographs. So this is lots of disaster debris all mixed up. The problem with the reason, and this is this uh, this kind of stuff will be common if you, whenever we are talking about disaster, whether we are talking about disaster in Rishikesh, we are talking about disaster in U in uh, Southeast United States, we are talking about disaster recently happening, what is happening in, in, uh, in Houston, Texas, or if you are looking at the disaster happening, uh, happened in Haiti, and uh, from time to time, we see all these different disasters coming in. So as you can see, a lot of things mixed up. And to, uh, to manage this kind of mixed material, it's always very challenging. Here you, have, you will have wood. You have a lot of uh, other materials coming in. You will have uh, uh, like a refrigerator kind of stuff. So a lot of different things uh, which is there. And houses after houses, you see those are being uh, demolished. You can see inside, there were refrigerator here. So this refrigerator will, will have a lot of other things in there too. See, there could be some perishable food. So food got, uh, uh, so you, you cannot have this food waste going to a CND recycling facility or CND processing facility. So this food waste needs to go to a regular trash. Uh, but since uh, it, uh, this, we had this natural disaster happening, so we will have these kind of issues where you will see that uh, things are uh, uh, like all mixed up, all uh, which is very difficult to manage. Uh, so from time to time. So here is uh, some more pictures uh, which we will go over. 
and this is uh, uh, again a damaged uh, house inside the house. It looks a very sorry state of affairs. You like some of the houses that we went into during that time. It was it was uh, very uh, like uh, you need really a very strong herd to control your emotions because things have, have really gone bad for few families. So this is again uh, condemned. Uh, this uh, this is not uh, to be used. So those kind of uh, signs were there. More pictures. CND material again construction demolition there waste. Uh, so this is again uh, another uh, the building whole building whole houses uh, got collapsed. Things went all, all the way up to the roof. Uh, there are all the tree uh, branches. So you have uh, this, this uh, like a disaster uh, like a debris putting on the roadside. And uh, so it's uh, this it can go for. Uh, uh, so local local companies were also had some damage because they had uh, these uh, their warehouses had several of these construction material which got damaged during the wind and the rain as well. So you see their uh, stuff getting damaged uh, too uh, along the side of the road. Lots of toilets from these houses, uh, the toilets coming out which you need potentially can be recycled. These two were where we are storing uh, some of the. Uh, so this is a uh, take uh, some uh, take a refrigerators where uh, not not this one but we had some other refrigerators where we try, we were collecting some samples where we were, where we were using it for storage purposes as well. Some more uh, uh, stuff like a disaster debris and then you see some people's food uh, all get so it even the food waste is usually construction and demolition waste when we think about we don't think about food waste coming in there. But when you have a disaster like this you have everything there you have basically you can have some food you can have some uh, cooked food uncooked food and other perishable items so a lot of the things could uh, show up we never know. And then again lots of uh, uh, some white goods you see again another picture of of uh, of the disaster debris uh, building coming off uh, you see lots of wood uh, wooden uh, things are used there again another picture of a disaster of that and that uh, the thing on the top is what is the asphalt singles so if i can explain uh, that do you remember if you were talking about the asphalt singles so these are asphalt singles this is the black stuff on top is what is known as the asphalt singles so we, we use as a roofing material So this uh, this was a uh, casino and uh, uh, kind of restaurant as well, which was supposed to be floating on on the sea, but it just came on on the ground because of all the wind and all, and it also got damaged really bad. So it's a lot of damage in there. So some other pictures of things, lots of electrical wires, other stuff. Things have gone really uh, totally messed up in terms of different different things going on there. In uh, for different types of buildings, a lot of uh, disaster debris. Uh, another pictures, uh, more pictures. So I have I have taken several pictures. I'll just walk you through all these pictures really quick. And you can see here, this is a masonry building. See that when the building collapse, uh, it's it may not be hundred percent collapse, but this building is already kind of damaged enough to be considered a safe building. So it's not a safe building anymore. Uh, so this uh, and then here you have a lot of rubble masonry. So maybe some bricks and other stuff coming in as well. Uh, so that's, that's another close picture of that. Lots of cars, cars got in that damaged. Now how will you manage the cars as in the part of disaster debris? So that's again another uh, thing we need to look at. Uh, so th those are uh, part of there as well. So there are some toying notice. Uh, if you don't remove your car within certain part time of time, they will take it away because the, uh, it was uh, obstructing the traffic. Some more uh, pictures of the disaster debris again here you can see all this stuff mixed up you can see some textile you can see some uh, wooden pieces so you can see some wire mess you can see some uh, like I, I can see some uh, shoes and other stuff in there as well and uh, so this whole building uh, has some problem building got uh, damaged and uh, here you see lots of mixture of uh, different stuff again again to another picture of construction waste uh, then t-shirt souvenirs this uh, although uh, this this is a uh, touristy area as well like uh, that particular it's a panhandle uh, after panhandle florida uh, this is louisiana and mississippi those area the beaches are white beaches they're called white beaches it's sand is white so very popular among uh, tourists uh, within in, within us outside us many people come to those area 
So we do, you do find a lot of uh, these kind of shops uh, where t-shirts, souvenirs and other stuff and most of it uh, kind of got damaged here, damaged there as well. Here you see some traces of uh, some sort of uh, pillow or a uh, mattress uh, some stuff in there. So that again, uh, it's showing up in uh, CND debris. So a lot of things does show up in CND debris now. Uh, which may not be a very inert material. Usually CND debris, with, we say that it's an inert material and we should be fine with that, but usually they are not. And uh, then another uh, photograph showing some of the uh, different types of garbage coming in. And here the, again, the church was damaged. This is the, that's, uh, that those uh, waste coming from there. Another uh, like a house damage, again house damage, a lot of things on the side of the road. You see that all the mixture, different types of material, all these lined up on the side of the road and some this cars, trucks, mini trucks, buildings again, building, you see a picture from a long distance like all the different chaotic activity kind of going on in there, a lot of waste material uh, which needs to be managed. So in this case, in this kind of scenario when you are managing this waste, uh, you have to actually talk with your MSW management friends as well. It's not only the CND waste, the MSW management of that area needs management as well. So if you work as a team that always seems better because you can use each other's resources, you can, use, you can rely on each other's strengths and uh, so that's uh, and whatever is the weakness that even when more than one brain looks at it, things become much easier uh, to think about. So this is another uh, picture, so a lot, some uh, houses uh, getting damaged, uh, some are being built and then you see some of these uh, automobiles and other stuff showing up as well. So another lots of pictures, I am just showing you pictures after pictures as you can see, lots of uh, photographs, so lots of different types of disaster debris. And uh, th that was uh, on uh, uh, Mississippi side, now on the New Orleans side, this is, uh, this is the dome where people took uh, the shelter that day uh, when uh, this Hurricane Katrina happened. Again, lots of uh, disaster, disaster debris and uh, a lot of uh, uh, stuff uh, getting, the, uh, getting into uh, the environment. You have mixture, textile, food, uh, other perishable items, some non-perishable items because it's all got wet now, so it's uh, very difficult to uh, work with that. So here people's even uh, family pictures uh, you can see on that uh, refrigerator which is uh, getting uh, dumped actually, getting into uh, in a landfill. Even uh, some uh, photographs of uh, uh, Bible and some other uh, stuff, well, people probably were, could not carry any of, any of these stuff, so it just got uh, left behind. And here you see uh, this uh, wooden, these are the wooden lumbers from that yard of uh, the wood uh, uh, supplier or wood uh, selling company. It uh, actually got floated and then by floating it got and hit uh, this uh, kind of went all the way to the front yard of this particular house. So which also needs to be removed. And uh, there are some uh, other uh, uh, like a lot of solidarity, lot of uh, NGOs and other peoples were working in that area trying to help and just some other pictures of another disaster debris, lots of mixture stuff. So the reason for me to showing all you lots and lots of these pictures is just to give you some idea of uh, when we talk about disaster debris, it's not just one particular waste, it's mixture of lot of waste stream and each one of them is uh, have certain uh, issues in terms of how that needs to be managed. So although construction and demolition waste is much easier to handle as, as opposed to MSW, that's what most of us think at least, but uh, it's in CND waste, especially from when we talk about this disaster waste, it's not only, it's a mixture of construction and demolition as well as MSW because you have everything showing up there and that gets really challenging to have this uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, understanding of uh, what, what is this disaster waste will be. And so that's the, one of the goal of this uh, uh, video and the previous video was to get you some idea about what is what are the real uh, stuff in terms of uh, construction and demolition. It's just like the disaster waste. What are the material? What other chemicals gets mixed up? And then how to keep it clean enough so that we can recycle most of it. So those things uh, uh, needs to be thought out. Some more pictures uh, of uh, stuff that shows up, uh, even some automobiles, construction and demolition, again mixed with several stuff, uh, some uh, brick kind of uh, stuff, that uh, another uh, 
uh, photographs are showing some of this disaster debris. So as you can see, lots of disaster debris. So things uh, getting uh, cl uh, cleaned up. We also collected some samples, brought it to the lab for analysis. And uh, so there are some lot of companies came up as well. The companies uh, actually already there, but they started putting their advertisement in terms of uh, if you have somebody wants to get the drywall removed, they can do it. So those things are there. And then again, uh, uh, it's a uh, like a disaster debris I can see over there. So this building frames got all the damaged as well because they were all wooden pieces. Probably the water reached up to this level. So I think the water uh, reached all to this level into this particular uh, building. So another, uh, some more pictures, uh, uh, wood. So all sorts of material, wood, concrete, drywall, uh, refrigerators, uh, fans, some biomedical waste as well. Uh, biomedical waste used to show up and uh, a lot of uh, other uh, material, automobile, automobile waste, uh, automobile uh, lumbers, of course, lumbers, a lot of lumbers are there. And these are some of the companies which are trying to work there in terms of managing it. And uh, so things were loaded up into these kind of truck and that truck will be taken to the disposal site. And there, there will be a person uh, at a higher elevation, he will inspect it. And then the waste will get dumped uh, into uh, the dumpster. Uh, this is another uh, photograph where uh, in terms of uh, they were trying to remove some of these uh, construction and demolition material and try to put it in the recycling facility. So some other pictures like they're trying to clear, do the land clearing, they to clean the uh, roads and other stuff. So some other uh, uh, photographs showing uh, some of these uh, managing how the things are being managed. Uh, things are being uh, like this as you can see lifted uh, white good will go in there. Another white good. So there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, like people put some sign over there. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of uh, things that you see people do it. And this person is called a spotter. He is, his job is to spot each and every truck. So truck is uh, at a elevation slightly lower than his elevation. So he can actually watch in, in the truck and to see whether the things are being done properly or not. So that's a very important. And there were some citizens drop off site, people can bring and drop it off uh, as we explained earlier as well. This is again waste disposal as for municipal solid waste, similar concept extended to CND waste. Uh, as for singles, plywood, hazardous waste if you have some that uh, needs to go in there. And then again we have do have a uh, spotter who will keep an eye on any of these waste coming up from these different houses. So and some processing of the waste, wood, wood waste especially processed to mulch and this mulch can be used as a amendment, soil amendment and all that. You can see some toast picture of that. And uh, so again, this is another, uh, another disposal center uh, where things are getting disposed. You can see all these and this is in an in a online landfill. So it's not the line landfill, it's an online landfill where the waste is getting dumped. Again, you will have a person looking into the waste uh, the spotter, he is keeping an eye on the waste which is coming in, but he can only see the top layer. Right? But if there is something hidden at the bottom layer, he will not be able to see that. But usually, would act, uh, they don't do it that way. Um, and so they are here, they are dumping the garbage. You see some refrigerators also showing up, other things showing up as well. And uh, looking at uh, that if, where the waste came from, what is that uh, uh, in terms of purpose of this waste and all that. So another some pictures of these, they have to sign this uh, people who is doing the spotter, they have to sign to certifying that they don't, they did not see any, any unlawful material in there. Then once the waste is dumped, it is uh, compacted at a CND uh, facility and the recyclables are taken and uh, given to the recycling center, which is uh, they work uh, on uh, recycling. So uh, this is how most of, uh, as you can see, the, the different types of waste uh, being produced and they have been uh, being uh, taken care of. Uh, CPU, all CPU, some of the cutting cutters and uh, so there was one for hazardous material and some pictures of the landfill, things are being worked into. So again, work photo of the mulch and uh, then you see some of these white goods being loaded and taken for some other uh, processing uh, as well. 
So Katrina dump sites, uh, that was the Katrina dump site, a lot of trucks you see coming in there and then uh, getting uh, uh, like details needs to be walk, uh, really needs to be filled in regarding the truck and all that and then the waste comes in, the person in here, they watch the waste and let it go uh, if it's okay. So here people are watching it, they are more than one person is watching it and keep making a record of that and then they also look at any other, any other abuse uh, stuff. So another uh, picture, so lots of uh, photographs here in terms of the waste coming in and getting dumped into this uh, disposal site. As you can see, uh, a variety of containers, it is coming into in a variety of containers, people are a variety of trucks as well and it's so many like a white goods all coming from the communities, still you can see uh, the capacitance uh, which is all is still there and uh, which will again be a hazardous in nature if uh, the chemicals and all that which is uh, in there. So white good, uh, uh, they are trying to salvage some of this stuff but most of it was just put into uh, the regular, uh, regular process of aluminum or steel and other stuff, how we recycle, we just doing to try to do the recycle. Here you see some food in the, in the refrigerator, so that's again will create the situation more worse. Uh, then again here also you see lots of foods and vegetables and other stuff, so those are really uh, problematic. Then there are some cleaning and disinfection area where you can clean yourself, you can get disinfected and uh, those things uh, is, uh, is used uh, uh, like by the workers working there. Then different material gets loaded up, now they will take it to a CND recycling facility or CND waste disposal facility. See some uh, papers also showing up there, uh, which is again came from uh, like the newspaper from that particular time. So in terms of the Hurricane Katrina challenges that we had, so this is again, this is just one example and you can look at this from a any, any, any disaster debris, so whether it's a disaster debris of Rishikesh uh, and uh, or whether it's a disaster debris of something else, it's the problem is it gets very difficult to recycle that material because things are so mixed up. It gets so that's why you see little recycling. Mostly large metal objects, those uh, those got recycled like white goods, cars. They can be easily recycled because they don't get mixed up with mixed up with others. Vegetative debris is ground but uh, used as alternative daily cover. Uh, for cement termites, uh, which is, uh, it's, that's again, that's a really problem, it just keep on coming back. Uh, there are, you have to meet the NESAP regulation or the OSHA regulation, which is the different for homes standing and then those are collapsed, so this is a little bit different. Inadequate infrastructure, uh, again, we need to have this waste management disaster, disaster management plan. Recently, uh, that reminds me that recently I attended this uh, one, uh, like a two-day workshop done by Ministry of uh, Home Affairs in Delhi. I think it was in the month of, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was in the month of May or uh, where we had this workshop in Delhi uh, for two days and we had this NRDF and a lot of Home, and home Affairs uh, Ministry, Secretary and all different people were there and we have been discussing on uh, how to have a disaster management plan in the Indian contest because disaster uh, is once the disaster is stuck, we don't have much time left. We have to start acting immediately. So in that case, we need to have a disaster management plan. The draft disaster management plan, which was circulated uh, in uh, our meeting in Delhi uh, in the month of May, did not include much on waste management. So that's again, uh, waste management got neglected over there. But as you can see from all these pictures and all the discussion, that's a very important component. So we need to include that waste management part uh, there as well in terms of trying to find out what, what is the best way to respond to that. So our, our uh, uh, response time may be limp, is, is may not be as good as what they could probably do in the western world because uh, the roads are uh, much wider. Here, uh, if we have some issues on the road, even uh, the road gets blocked from both the sides because you can hardly have uh, uh, like a roads. So many many places the roads are very narrow. So that's a, that's because it's an old country. So it's we have old cities. They will have narrow roads. We cannot do much about that. So, but uh, there are uh, uh, inadequate infrastructure that needs to be addressed uh, in, 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 of course, in Indian contest as well. And what, the, what was found out, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which were given the task of managing the waste, they were, we found out that they were somewhat unfamiliar with the waste management. They didn't really knew uh, what waste management entailed. And that's again very true uh, in our contest. In the, when we go to many of these ULBs, like I visited a few of them, there are only very few people there who really understand the 
why they are doing it, what is the purpose of doing all that. The others just do it because they are told to do it. So it's uh, that's uh, so that's that's probably similar in U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They are unfamiliar with the waste management. Uh, so we need uh, it, we don't want to have similar situation in India. So if something happens, uh, people should be there who understand waste management. So uh, who understand uh, if it's a water related, wastewater related, whatever. So it needs to be uh, uh, understood, and that's what. Uh, uh, but the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers could not do much on that. FEMA reimbursement deadlines uh, led to more disposal. But they were, had some uh, deadline in terms of when uh, they will uh, do the reimbursement to the people. So disposal, how it was done? They're using the clay or natural liners, no leachate collection. S2S problem will happen rarely, likely in the future. USACA, uh, Army Corps of Engineers had tipping fee, many established landfill and un unwilling to step. Uh, they were unwilling to step at that particular rate. Uh, must uh, must uh, like a crew newer uh, most most crew uh, not must crew. It should be most crew for new, uh, preferring uh, new or uh, use less preferable landfills. That's what must create new. Okay, so they in terms of the disaster debris, they should be looking at the new disposal sites. The hazardous waste needs to be kept out. So all those things were there. Refrigerators was found to be the big problem. It's uh, in uh, Mississippi, one out of 25 refrigerators still had refrigerant in there. And then how to manage more effectively that in future. So electronic waste again, much not, uh, uh, it was not, it was still sewing up in the waste stream, cannot be reused uh, due to salt water intrusion. So it's the electronics was gone because it was a salt water and it really made that electronics bad. But the, as as the e-waste, it was there in the waste stream. And this is again will be similar, like uh, most of the houses now has a fridge in India. Most of the houses you will see one sort of at least few laptops or uh, maybe one laptop. Uh, middle class, middle class and the higher middle class, slightly even the lower middle class as well, you start seeing these things coming up, uh, smartphones and other tabs and all those things. So that's uh, in Indian context again, it's very relevant, electronic waste, different household appliances uh, that is there. God forbid if some disaster happened, which uh, like recently, a uh, few weeks back, you had must have heard in Bombay, a building collapsed. Now, this building collapsed in Bombay. When the building got collapsed, the, all this stuff which was there in that building, say in the kitchen, they had all these different gadgets. So, all those things also uh, are gone with that. So, and then they will potentially con may contaminate that uh, uh, disaster debris, and we may not be able to use that disaster debris because of uh, uh, the, uh, the contaminant that is showing up there. So biggest lesson to learn from that particular uh, disaster and same thing uh, when we are talking about this two day workshop in Delhi in terms of the disaster debris manager uh, like a disaster uh, response management uh, that the thing also came up there in terms of what we learned from uh, this uh, like a Kedarnath, Badrinath, uh, sorry Kedarnath, uh, Rishikesh and those uh, 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 the disaster that we had a uh, couple of years back. It was uh, it's uh, that the disaster management plan, the disaster debris management plan or the cleanup plan should be part of every local government solid waste management plan. So if there is some disaster, how we will respond? What is what is the pro what will be the protocol of response? Rather than selecting at the peak of a time that okay, let's do this, let's just do this. It's you need to think it over. You need to think it over and come up with a better uh, plan. Include provisions for disaster in MSW collection uh, contracts. So in the MSW collection contract, you have you include the provisions for uh, disaster there. Informed the decisions made well in advance. So you make the decision and inform the public what is the decisions are being made. Ensure it is handled by experienced solid waste professionals who can really do it. And then say, look at how the sister counties or sister cities has done it. There are a lot of sharing information available which you can do that. So with that uh, kind of we wrap up this construction and demolition waste management, uh, the whole uh, uh, topic uh, as I promised earlier that it would be, it would be like an overview of construction and demolition waste. What are the challenges? We also talked about the disaster waste. So construction, demolition and disaster waste. What is what it is, uh, how it is managed presently in globally Indian contest, uh, how, uh, what are the different components of it, if you want to recycle, how it is done in terms of some economical challenges with recycling, 
We talked about disaster debris in this last module. We looked at uh, Hurricane Katrina as one example. Uh, similar examples can be drawn from the Indian contest as well. So as you can see, it's a very complex uh, subject, uh, in, especially from the disaster debris point of view. Construction waste, again, I said in few videos back, construction waste, easy to handle. Demolition waste, slightly harder. Disaster waste, very hard to manage that. So with that, let's, uh, but you can do it as long as we make a proper plan for it. And we talked about that in this uh, last few videos regarding to CND waste. So with that, let's, let's close this video. And then the next uh, uh, video will uh, focus on electronic waste management. So we'll move to e-waste management uh, from next video. Okay, thank you.